Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm a big fan of the show. <laughs> it's brand new. It's fresh. I have to say I'm a little jealous. If I had to take this interview outside, it would be a snowy background. You know, in Wisconsin, we're, we're a little bit colder and a little bit more snow covered than you. So where, tell me where you're located right now. I am in sunny San Jose, California. So yeah, my, my wife and I, we moved here about two and a half years ago. And uh, as much as I complain about the cost of living, I, I do have to say you can't beat the weather. Yes, I know. I've been seeing your training stuff posted and shared on our social media. So little tinge of jealousy. I will live vicariously through you. So uh, so glad that you are on the team this year. You are one of our uh, entries that came in right near the end, and we just loved your application. And what I first want to talk about is you were diagnosed with MS in 2009. So just briefly, take me back to what that initial feeling was like to be introduced to what this disease is at such a young age. Yeah, um, like you mentioned, I was diagnosed at the age of 25. And uh, I had just recently graduated from college a few months prior. Uh, you know, when you think of a, a recent college grad, you think of someone, you know, who's kind of gung ho and ready to take on the world. And uh, for me to be, you know, diagnosed at that time, it almost kind of felt like, you know, my my life was ending right at that moment that it, you know, it should be beginning. Um, and so it, it was definitely scary. Um, you know, I. I tried to educate myself and I went online to learn as much as I could about the disease. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of scary stuff out there. And um, so I think, I think the, the major thing for me was just the uncertainty, you know, would I be able to have a career? Um, would I be able to, you know, get married and have a family of my own? Um, you know, what, what would MS do to my body? Would I be able to remain active and, you know, do those things that I, that I love to do. So um, definitely probably the scariest experience I've, I've ever been through. Now, one of the things that I really love about your story is kind of like the, I can imagine, you know, there's a transition through that initial diagnosis, but then how you were proactive afterwards. So you told me you made some lifestyle changes. Can you give me like one or two specific things that you did that you think made a difference in um, kind of bringing you into this new life with you living with MS and then also being active. Yeah. So, um, after getting diagnosed, I, you know, went online, did a lot of research and I stumbled upon, um, a website called mshope.com. And the website was created by, um, a man named Matt Embry, whose dad is a PhD and developed a, a diet for, for people with MS and it's called the best bet diet. And so it's kind of a modified paleo approach. Um, but I implemented that diet um, roughly about one year after being diagnosed. Uh, and it's, it's gluten free, it's dairy free. Um, and, and I feel like it's um, done a great job at, at keeping my symptoms at bay. Um, you know, I noticed shortly after beginning the diet that, uh, that you know, my energy levels increased, um, my ability to focus uh, improved and uh, yeah I've, I've done fairly well on it for the for the past 11 years now so yeah d diet w was huge um, just making sure that I'm getting enough sleep sleep um, managing stress levels um, and then just you know trying to, to stay active and it's amazing how much our body can respond by just those things where like you like you just named off nutrition sleep exercise those are all things that we know we should be doing and it was almost like ms really like pushed you to have a reason to do it further so that you can you know now function better while living with this disease so you are an endurance athlete you put that in your application you said you love endurance sports so what is it about endurance sports that you love? Is there something that you've discovered about yourself in this journey of being an endurance athlete that you think is just something that draws you to it? Yeah, and I, I think I'm kind of a wannabe endurance athlete because this, you know, event will actually actually be the first event that I've ever actually, you know, trained for. <laughs> but I, I have run a marathon and a handful of half marathons. And I, I think what I love most about endurance events sports 
um, is probably that feeling of accomplishment, you know, after the race or after the event. Um, but I also have always enjoyed, um, you know, pushing my physical limits and, and seeing what my body is capable of. Um, and especially, you know, now that I have a progressive autoimmune disease like MS, um, it's a huge confidence boost when I can, um, you know, go out and, and complete a marathon or, or six marathons in six days. Um, you know, it give, gives me that confidence boost that I need. It's comfort. It's comforting me to me to know that you're training for this, <laughs> that you ran a marathon and that you didn't train for it. Or maybe there's other, I know you've done Ragnars and stuff like that and that you didn't train for them. It's just, it's nice to know that you are really training for this. So thank you for that. I appreciate that, the level of dedication. I um, definitely learned my lesson with the one marathon that I've run, um, did not train and hit that wall at about mile 18 and also didn't know what I was doing. I, I ran way too fast for the first like eight or nine miles and yeah, I, I told myself, I, okay, I'm never running another one of these without training. And here I am 10 years later, and I'm going to run six of them in six days. So <laughs> it is, it is an effort, but one that I think is just, you know, obviously I think it's, it's wonderful. I'm just so glad to have you on this team. So you wanted to apply for this event. Did you tell your family before you applied? Did you tell them after you applied and knew that you were in the running for a spot or what was that conversation like with your family? So I actually did not consult with my wife before applying. I think it was kind of on a whim. I, it came up on my computer and I just decided to fill out an application. And then I'm sure I told her after I had submitted the application. My wife has been nothing but 100% behind me and, and supportive from day one. Um, when we began dating, I already had been diagnosed with MS and um, I think we had been dating for a month when I uh, mustered up enough courage to tell her about my diagnosis. And, you know, I thought it might be a deal breaker for her, but she's been nothing but supportive. And just to give you an idea of how supportive she is with this event, um, day one of my run is May 19th, which coincidentally is our 10 year wedding anniversary. So I'll be <laughs> Happy anniversary. I'm going to go running for four to five hours now. <laughs> I told her I'll, I'll have to make it up to her. <laughs> we'll help you. Maybe we'll do something fun on the road to, you know, to commemorate the the decade that you guys have been together. And that's, that's so um, encouraging to hear that that support has been there all along. And I, you know, as someone who's married that that support and encouragement and like that partnership in everything that you're going through in life is just is just so important and now you have three small children and they're seeing you train have have you seen and they absorb things like sponges so have you seen them pick up any traits um seeing you train so much or what has that experience been like having a small family and um, or young kids and, and having to do all this training? Yeah, so I have um, three boys, ages six, four, and one. And um, and honestly, I, I don't think that they're old enough yet to really fully understand or even have an opinion on on what I'm about to undertake with the, the six marathons in six days. But, um, but it's been really fun. You know, I, I'm always encouraging them and, you know, trying to get outside with them and, uh, and encourage them and try to cultivate a love for sports and the outdoors and you know being active and uh i think that you know as they get older and they can look back at their dad and and see that you know that he he was able to you know overcome these obstacles and you know um not let this kind of disease define him and and you know set goals and accomplish them i i think we'll hopefully rub off on them as they get older and maybe gain a better understanding of what it is I'm about to do. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it will rub off on them. And have you thought at all about the effects of um, exposing them to something like this at such a young age? Like you said, they might not be able to absorb it, but now they're going to grow up thinking that running six marathons in six days is normal. <laughs> so have you thought at all about how that might affect them going into the world thinking, oh, you ran a marathon, just one? My dad did six of them in a row. 
Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I mean, obviously I wanna have a positive impact on them and, and hopefully they, you know, see me still being able to accomplish these incredible endurance feats at, you know, even with a, a disease like MS and hopefully that has a positive impact on them. Um, I, I think my six-year-old, he's more impressed with, that I can still d dunk a basketball on 10 feet. So I, I see that <laughs> hopefully I uh, can, can keep that up. <laughs> now, before we wrap up, you have an opportunity to ask me a question about the organization or myself. So do you have anything top of mind that you'd love to ask me? Yeah. Um, since starting MS Run the U.S., what has been your most memorable moment with the organization? You know, Matt, that is such a great question. The, the most memorable moment for me, I think, is the fact that the relay almost didn't happen. So we were scheduled to start April 2013, and in December, January, we only had seven runners signed up for the event, and I, had, I was looking for 20. And we didn't have a sponsor, we didn't have a motorhome, and so I essentially emailed the group and said, thanks for signing up, but we don't have all these pieces in place, and we don't even have a full team, so it looks like it's not going to happen. And to be honest with you, at the time, I had a growing fitness business, and I had just starting, started dating my now husband. And so I was, I mean, I was okay with it. I was looking for an honorable way to move on and do something else. So um, the group emailed back and they said, nope, uh, if you can drive your car, we'll sleep in tents. I had three runners sign up to do two segments. And then they became foot soldiers and they went out and they recruited runners. And by the time April rolled around, we had a full team of 16 runners. Three of those runners did run across a whole section of the state. And, um, and that's why we're here today because the runners at that time believed in this event so much that they wanted to see it through. So that for me is the most memorable moment. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely well, excited and ha happy to be a part of the team. And we're obviously happy to have you. I'm excited to see you run segment six in uh, crossing us from Utah into Colorado, and you'll be doing that this summer. So we'll look forward to your episode then. And until then, we will see you training online. Sounds good. See you later, Matt. I'm Ashley Schneider, Executive Director of MS Run the US. Thank you so much for watching our videos and make sure to subscribe so you can get our latest uploads.